Cheers. Okay, right off the bat, I like this book because it's dedicated to a dog. If you needed more cat, you, you got it. Hey guys, my name is Yasmina. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I really want to challenge myself to read more outside of my comfort zone. And for this video, I am planning on reading three cozy mysteries. So I have read Agatha Christie's, some of Agatha Christie's novels before and absolutely loved them. And those are also part of the genre called cozy mysteries. And I've always been super intrigued by this genre because first of all, I know this is very superficial, but the covers in this genre are just so adorable. Every time I see one of these books, I just, I just want it. I need it. <laughs> the whole idea with these books is that there is a murder and an unlikely detective is going to solve the crime and you're going to find out who done it at the end of the book. So they're very self-contained. So the idea is you can read them out of order. I did some research kind of like what are, you know, some of the more popular series and I picked up three books that I'm going to read in this reading vlog. Everything will be spoiler free, of course, but I just want to try it out and see if it's see if it's something for me, you know? So let me show you the books. So first off, we have The Jasmine Moon Murder by Laura Childs. I think this is the fifth book in this particular series. Next one I have is Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley. And this is one of the most highly rated ones from what I have seen. It is also quite different from the other two that I have, but I just thought I should give it a try. And the last one I have is Bookmarked for Death by Lorna Barrett. And I think this is number two in this particular Booktown mystery series. So these are the three books that I'm gonna read for this challenge. Wish me luck. I hope I will enjoy them, but you will find out soon. Okay, so as for the first cozy mystery for this video, I'm going to pick up the Jasmine Moon Murder by Laura Childs. And I'm also reading this book for a different themed reading vlog, but it is a cozy mystery. It is quite a short one. It only has about 250 pages, but I think this will be a very quick one to read. So yeah, I'm really excited and um, let's see if I like it. This is, I don't know if it's the first, but it's part of a tea shop mystery <laughs> series. And it also says that it includes recipes and tea time tips. So I'm also quite curious. I know this is a thing, in Cozy Mysteries to include a lot of recipes. So I'm curious how that plays into the reading experience. Is it like an extra thing? Is it somehow blended into the story? I'm not sure. I will update you as I find this out for myself. <laughs> So this is my little reading corner with some black tea. I didn't have any jasmine tea, so I just, you know, drink normal sort of black tea with oat milk and then some digestive biscuits and of course the book, The Jasmine Moon Murder. Okay, right off the bat, I like this book because it's dedicated to a dog. The main character's dog is called Earl Grey. Oh my god. <laughs> I knew that these types of books have a lot of puns, like a lot of food related puns, uh, specifically sort of revolving around the, the theme, in this case, tea. So I, I, I should have expected this, and yet somehow I'm still disappointed <laughs> because of the puns. Oh my god, the puns are so bad. I mean, it's it's like it's cute it's a cute pun but i just uh, makes me just a little just a little bit angry just having some iced matcha because it was a little bit too warm for hot tea, but uh, that's okay because I'm going to spill some tea talking about this. So I finished 
the Jasmine Moon murder. And the good news is that it was quite a quick read. I finished it really fast. The bad news is I didn't, I didn't really like it. So I'm not gonna spoil it obviously, but you know, it's a murder mystery. Someone dies and this unlikely tea shop owner just kind of gets her nose into the investigation and, you know, uncovers the truth. And it's that sort of story, the unlikely detective. The problem is I just didn't care, like I did not care about any of the characters. Everything was just very factual, except for all of the food and tea descriptions. I have to say it was very, very rich in food and tea descriptions. And the thing about the recipes, so there's some recipes at the back of the book, recipes that are mentioned in the book as, you know, being served. Oh, there's like tea bag trivia riveting, riveting stuff. But there's one here that says create an aromatic Christmas tree by decorating a small tree with an assortment of colorful tea packets. How about not? What the f don't do that. That's just silly. It was very quaint. I have to say it was just very quaint. And I can definitely see some people enjoying this because, you know, it is a murder mystery. We do go through all these clues and have to interrogate people and investigate situations. There's a lot of tea drinking and a lot of eating. But that's more or less it. It isn't any deeper than that. And I'm not saying it should be. It's more that I like it to be deeper than that. I like there to be at least something for me to root for someone, to root for someone, to relate to something that makes me emotionally attached to the characters of the story and this just lacked that for me <laughs> so it might be that the genre just isn't for me but this is just one book that i've read in this genre so there's two more books that i'll read for this video so we'll see if it's a genre thing or if it's this book thing i can't make an opinion just based off of this book i gave this two stars because as the goodreads description of the star rating goes it was okay you know it's just not something for me, but I will try to make one recipe from the back of this book. There's quite a few recipes in here, but I'm gonna go for something easy just to kind of try it out because I do think this is like a fun little add-on to the reading experience. So I'm gonna make one drink recipe from this book and try it out. So yeah, that was the first cozy mystery. Not, not a great success, but um, oops. <laughs> But we'll see, maybe maybe the next one will be better. <laughs> okay, so I'm sitting on the floor. I'm about to film a different video, but I just made the drink from the book, The Jasmine Moon Murder, or a drink from the back of the book. So this is a Drayton's Green Tea Tippler. And it's very simple to make. You need some vodka, some strong green tea, cooled but i went with matcha because i had matcha and matcha is a very very strong you know powdered green tea a bit of lemon juice some fresh grated ginger sugar syrup which you can make from scratch or i had some syrup lying around and the lemon for garnish but i didn't have that and you just basically mix all the ingredients together and put them in a glass with some ice which is what i did so yeah this is a recipe that appears in the book the characters are drinking this from what I remember, they were saying it's tasty. We shall see. Um, I. It just smells like bacha and lemon juice. <laughs> I can barely even smell the vodka. So um, let's see if the drink from this cozy mystery is any good. Cheers. Oh, wow. Do you know what? I did not expect this to taste good, but this is... This is delicious. I like this. <laughs> I'm definitely going to finish the rest of this and then film a video. That'll be, that'll be a fun video. This is really good. I recommend it. I recommend it. Okay, so the next cozy mystery I'm going to try is called The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. This is the first book in the Flavia de Luz mystery, and I started this, but I'm only about 15 pages. So it's about this 11-year-old girl who I think will be like the primary, you know, detective in solving a murder. But right now she's like obsessed with chemistry and 
uh, really into poisons. So that's all I know so far. But yeah, it's an interesting concept and it's very, very different than the cozy mystery that I read before the Jasmine Moon murder. So this seems like something I might enjoy more. It, the writing style is something I'm more accustomed to, but we shall see. Uh, I can't really say much more than that at this point. I just started it. This one, however, does not include any recipes as far as I'm aware, sadly. <laughs> got out of the shower so um excuse this but um yeah so it's some time later and I'm still on page 80 of this book and I've been reading it reading it for a week and a half almost two weeks and I've only managed to manage managed, <laughs> sorry I've only gotten to page 80 and I I'm not liking this. This has actually put me in a reading slump and I have not been in a reading slump in a really long time. But I just have like no interest in like picking this book up and reading or anything else for that matter because I know that I kind of have to or you know should read this before I pick up anything else so that I can finish this video. But I really don't like it. So I think my main issue is the main character and actually the writing style. As I said, we follow this 11 year old, really smart girl, but the way she is written, she's really obnoxious. Like she's this, you know, know it all. She talks like an adult. She talks down to other adults. And the way she's written is really annoying because there's parts where I feel like the author is trying to be, you know, witty and make like jokes, but it's not really working for me. At least it just adds to the annoyance and to the main character just being obnoxious. And honestly, I just don't care. I am struggling and I don't really DNF books. And I feel like if I am going to DNF this book, I should at least make it at least like page 100 so that I can say I've given it a fair shot. But my main issue is that I just, I'm not reading because of this book. Like this has put me in a reading slump and I don't like that. I'm still debating if I'm, if I should push through, maybe it'll get better, or just move on and, and pick up the next one. I might DNF, I might push through. You will find out soon in the next clip. So I did give up on this. I did reach page 100, 108 to be exact, but I just, I have not been this disinterested in a book in a really long time. and and. It's weird because I don't think this is a bad book. I just don't like it personally. Like, it's just not for me. I don't like the protagonist. I don't like the voice. I don't like the writing style. And I'm just not really interested in the actual crime investigation. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to DNF this, which I almost never do. I never, usually never DNF books. I try to push through, but this has put me in a reading slump and I have not read anything in like two weeks or more. And I'm just kind of done with that. I want to pick up a book and read, like a good book. So that's going to be it with this for me, unfortunately. Like I said, I think a lot of people really like it. I just didn't. Okay, it's been a while. So the next one is called Bookmarked for Death by Lorna Barrett. And this is part of a book town mystery series. I'm not sure which number. I think it's the second one in the series also includes recipes yes but this is my favorite cover of all of the the ones that i've have in this video there's just something about this cover that just screams cozy i mean there's a cat and it's a bookshop and there's cake what more can you possibly need look at it it's so cute there's also a cat face on the back if you needed more cat you, you got it. It's about 300 pages, so I'm hoping it won't take me too long. Let's get to Ow. <laughs> Let's get to reading before I murder myself and become um, an investigation in my own library.
Small update from my in front of my Christmas tree. So bookmark for death, I'm about 80 pages in. And this is a lot more interesting. Oh, I gel with this better than I did with the first, well, the first two books, to be honest. There's a cat character, or there's a cat that one of the characters has in this book that is called Miss Marple. And the owner of this bookshop, it's a it's a mystery themed bookshop and the owner's cat is called Miss Marple, which I just thought is cute. Is this like something with cozy mysteries that the pets in these books have to be some kind somehow related to the like theme of the book? Like we had Earl Grey for the tea book and now we have Miss Marple for a mystery bookshop book. This is a lot better. So the murder in this is a local famous author who does a signing in this bookshop and then dies mysteriously. And it's up to the bookshop owner to investigate and find out who done it, essentially. So, so far it's actually, it's actually quite nice and I'm enjoying it a lot more than I did the first two. So we'll see, hopefully that continues. And it's quite also quite short and I also feel like it's pretty fast paced. So I feel like I can get through this rather quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and try and finish this book soon. Snowing outside. That's pretty perfect because I finished bookmarked. For death. Wish it would have snowed while I was finishing reading this, because that would have been cozier. Get it? Because cozy mystery. Yeah. I like this. I really like this. Well, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I actually enjoyed this. Like, I read it, I didn't skip any of it. I was pretty invested in the murder and the investigation. So, this one? Yes, definitely. Maybe it's because of the theme. I mean, obviously, I love books. I love bookshops. And I'm also a writer. So I think there was a lot more that I could connect to in this one versus the other two. But generally, this was really quaint and I liked our heroine. There was definitely less sort of recipes and food talk in this one. And I had a look at the back of like the recipes and I'm not really interested in any of them. So I don't think I'm going to make any of them because I don't want to just make something for no reason. But I still think it's nice that we have these recipes in the back just if you're curious and you want to make something. So, because I liked this one, maybe there is hope, but I didn't like the other two. So I don't know. I keep hitting myself. So, I have read three cozy mysteries. So let's recap. The first I read was The Jasmine Moon Murder by Laura Childs, which I gave two stars to, unfortunately. Then we have The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley, which even more unfortunately, I did not finish and it put me in a reading slump. But finally, finally, we have Booked Marked for Death by Lorna Barrett, which I did enjoy and I gave three stars to. And it's the only one of these three I would actually recommend. If you're interested in cozy mysteries, then I would recommend trying this one. Ooh. It's been an interesting experiment, an interesting time. You know, these reading vlogs really push me to read not only more, but very much out of my comfort zone. And that was one of my main goals with making these reading vlogs, was to force myself to read more of my comfort, out of side of my comfort zone, because I just mainly read, you know, fantasy, why contemporary sci-fi, just the things that I know I'll probably like picking up. And while that's fine, as a writer as well, I want to experience as many narrative styles, as many narrative voices, as many stories as possible, which is why I think that I personally really like these experiments, even when they're not necessarily that successful, because, you know, two of these books I didn't like, one I liked, I didn't love, like I didn't fall in love with any of these stories, but one I did enjoy. But without having made this reading vlog, I wouldn't have known if cozy mysteries were for me or not. But now I know, and the answer is 
Probably not. You know, I did enjoy this, so if I'm ever in the mood for something like this again, then there's definitely other books in this particular series by this author that I can pick up. But if you read Cozy Mysteries, let me know your favorites down in the comment section below, because maybe I just was unlucky with the particular books that I picked up for this challenge. Maybe there are others that I will love. I just haven't found them yet. So do let me know. I'll definitely check them out if you say they are brilliant. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do one of these in the future, um, trying to find more cozy mysteries that I love. I just realized that these two were published by the same publisher, which makes sense because they are very similar, both in cover design and, you know, spine design. Also really want to say that I love these kinds of paperback copies. They're so cute and cozy and they feel so nice when you like touch, touch them. Is that weird? It's probably weird. Here is another themed reading vlog if you haven't watched it already. And here are all the books that I read in 2021. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time in a new video. Bye.